So I'm going to start reading at line 348. Impenetrable. A mystery recondite is the vast plan of which we are a part. Its harmonies are discords to our view because we know not the great theme they serve. Inscrutable work the cosmic agencies. Only the fringe of a wide surge we see. Our instruments have not that greater light. Our will tunes not with the eternal will. Our heart's sight is too blind and passionate important to share in nature's mystic tact, inapt to feel the pulse and core of things. Our reason cannot sound life's mighty sea and only counts its waves and scans its foam. It knows not whence these motions touch and pass. It sees not whither sweeps the hurrying flood. Only it strives to canalize its powers and hopes to turn its course to human ends. But all its means come from the inconscient store. Unseen, hear, act, dim, huge world energies. And only trickles and currents are our share. Our mind lives far off from the authentic light catching at little fragments of the truth in a small corner of infinity. Our lives are inlets of an ocean's force. Our conscious movements have sealed origins, but with those shadowy seats, no converse holds. No understanding binds our comrade parts. Our acts emerge from a crypt our minds ignore. Our deepest depths are ignorant of themselves. Even our body is a mystery shop. As our earth's roots lurk, screened below our earth, so lie unseen our roots of mind and life. Our springs are kept close hid beneath within. Our souls are moved by powers behind the wall. In the subterranean reaches of the spirit, a puissance acts and wrecks not what it means. Using unthinking monitors and scribes, it is the cause of what we think and feel. The troglodytes of the subconscious mind ill-trained, slow, stammering interpreters, only of their small tasks routine aware, 
and busy with the record in ourselves, concealed in the subliminal secrecies, mid an obscure occult machinery, capture the mystic morse whose measured lilt transmits the messages of the cosmic force. A whisper falls into life's inner ear and echoes from the dim subconscious caves. Speech leaps, thought quivers, the heart vibrates, the will answers, and tissue and nerve obey the call. Our lives translate these subtle intimacies. All is the commerce of a secret power. Martin, you will start. Impenetrable, the mystery reconnoitred is the world plan of which we are a part. These harmonies are discords to all of you, because we know not the great team they serve. Hmm. So, a mystery, a deeply hidden mystery, something that's recondite, it's very secret. Hmm. So this secret is impenetrable. We can't penetrate into it, into this vast plan, this vast universal plan which we are a part of. Actually, it's perfectly harmonious, but its harmonies seem like discords to our view. We are always noticing that things are not as they ought to be. There are clashes and uh, confusions and uh, difficulties. These discords, it's because we don't understand what is going on. We know not the great theme that all these apparent discords, which are actually harmonies, they're serving a theme like a theme in music, in a great symphony. Then if we, you listen to a very complex symphonic music, there will be themes and there'll be notes that sound like discords and clashes. But only if you listen carefully for some more time, you will see that they are actually parts of complex harmonies. So that's what's happening in our world. And it's, they seem like discords because we don't know what is the intention which they are serving. So the inscrutable word, the cosmic agency. Only the print of a white cell we see. Our instrument are not the greater light. Our will tunes not with the eternal will. Our heart type is too bright and passionate. Mm -hmm. So something that's inscrutable. It's also it's difficult to understand. Sc something that's scrutable, you can read it. If something's inscrutable, you can't read it. So the cosmic agencies, all the powers of the universe, are working in ways which are difficult for us to understand which we can't understand, because we only see a part. There's a huge, wide surge, great waves of force, but uh, we only just see the foam at the edge, only the fringe of a wide surge we see. And we only see that fringe because our instruments our instruments of perception, our instruments of hearing, 
and sight and smell, our instruments of understanding, that they don't have the greater light they would need to be able to read what's going on, really. Our will. We have our human mental will, but it doesn't know what's going on. The mind doesn't know. The instruments don't know. So our will, our human will, is not in harmony with the eternal will. It tunes not. It's not in harmony. And that's partly because the sight of our heart, the way that our heart looks at things, is too blind and passionate. It's full of impulses and wishes and desires. It can't understand really. It's blinded by all that self-will. Bhuvana? Important to share in nature's mystic diet. Enough to feel the pulse and core of things. Our vision cannot sound, light might be seen, and only counts its waves and scans its form. It knows no when these motions touch and part. It sees not, withers, sweeps the hurrying cloud. Only it strives to canalize its powers and hopes to turn its course to human end. But all these means come from the inconscient store. Hmm. Impotent, powerless to share in the mystic tact of nature. Nature has a secret, perfect way of doing things. Tact, just doing things just right, in harmony. Hmm? But our reason can't share, can't uh, appreciate that, the accuracy of that tact. It's inapt, it's un unfit, unable to feel the way the pulse of things, the energies, the way they're flowing, and the core, the heart from which they're flowing. You know? Our reason can't, uh, can't deal with all that. It's not able to sound life's mighty sea. We've had this word several times before. No? To sound meaning to find out how deep something is. It's the way that uh, sailors used to find out how deep the water was beneath their boats. They would uh, tie a weight on a rope and send it down and see when it touched the bottom. It's a sounding. Nowadays they do it with electronic means. So our reason can't, uh, can't find out where the bottom is, where the base is. It only can count the waves on the surface. Hmm? And it can look at the foam, all those bubbles on the top. It doesn't know what's beneath, what is lying beneath, what is there on the bottom. It doesn't see um, where all these movements are coming from. And it doesn't see to where that surge, that flowing current is going. What our reason would like to do would be able to channel the powers, those cosmic powers that are there in that uh, cosmic ocean. It would like to be able to use them for our human purposes. No? It would like to turn the course of that enormous power of, of the ocean to our human purposes, our human ends. But it can't do that 
because all its instruments, all its tools, all its ways of doing things, all of them belong to the inconscient. They don't have the greater light. Please tell me the word only the little Mm -hmm. itself is having all these things. I think the whole universe is having these things. Mm. Um, Philomena, would you read? I'm seeing here at the huge world emerges and one of tricks and Currents of our shell. Our mind lives, lives. lives far off from the other authentic language. Catching at little fragments of the truth in a small corner of infinity our lives our lives our lives are in in inlets of an ocean's force yes so this is difficult this lives and lives no <laughs> we have to see if it is a if it is a verb then it's lives and if it's a noun then it's lives. So we just have to be able to see the structure of the sentence, no? and it's not always easy. But basically what he's saying is that there are these huge world energies, immensely powerful forces, universal forces, that are acting here in our world. But they are dim, they are dark, they, are, they don't have the greater light. And we only get just tiny little trickles and currents from those immensely powerful energies. Only trickles and currents, tiny little flows. Our mind lives far off, very far away from the authentic light, the real truth light. And when it tries to be aware, tries to be conscious, it's just catching little fragments of the truth. And where are we? We're just in this tiny little corner of infinity. So our lives, some energy is here, allowing us to live. But our lives are just inlets of an ocean's force. So there's that huge ocean surge, but we are just getting little streams of energy from it. An inlet, it's where the, um, the ocean comes up against the land, the force of those huge waves is broken and just little um, inlets. <laughs> if you are a sailor and, and you use a sailing boat, you will be looking for inlets, places where you can sail your boat into the shelter of the land away from uh, the big forces, the storms that come. There'll be uh, places you can sail in, has to be deep enough, you know, and you're protected from the full force of the ocean. So it's like that. We are getting little inlets of force, universal force. Uh, Robert. Our conscious movements have seal origins, but with those shadowy seats, no converse holds. 
no understanding minds our common parts. Our acts emerge from a fruit our minds ignore. Our deepest depths are ignorant of themselves. Even our body is a mystery shop. As our earth's root, roots lurk, screen below our earth, so lie unseen our roots of mind and life. Yes. So the, we do things and we are conscious of what we are doing, some of the time, at least half conscious. But what we are not aware of are those sealed origins, those secret reasons why we are doing these things, where these movements come from. And um, our consciousness, um, it, it, it's not in communication with those secret seats, the, sh the shadowy origins of our movements. And there's no understanding connecting all the different parts of ourselves. We have so many parts, but we are not in good communication, or the parts are not in good communication with each other. Our actions, the things that we do, they just pop up from a deep underground place that our minds don't know anything about. Just like that we find ourselves saying or doing or thinking or feeling things without being aware really of why. Here he uses this word ignore. In ordinary English, when we ignore somebody, we just pay no attention to him. But Sri Aurobindo in the poem often uses the word in this original French meaning of being ignorant of, not knowing. So it's like that. Our acts are coming up from a deep, dark place that our minds don't know anything about. Our deepest depths, even the depths are ignorant of themselves. They don't know either. And even our body, we, you would think our body is what we know most about, but it's also full of mysteries. And we feel ourselves find, uh, sometimes feeling fine and other times feeling just awful and we have no idea why. He says our earth's roots, are the roots of our matter, our substance, it has deep roots. No? They are below our earth. <laughs> Down below we don't know anything about the roots. No? And in a similar way, we don't know about the roots of our mind and our life. Of course, Sri Aurobindo, particularly in this canto, he's telling us about these things. But mostly we don't know about them. We are not aware. Our springs, the, the, the springs which make us work, like a clockwork toy, you know, uh, they are hidden, kept close hidden, beneath, in the subconscious, within. Our souls are moved by powers behind the wall. It's not just a veil, it's a wall. We, our souls are being moved and influenced. There's this wall, we have no idea what's happening on the other side. Joel. Our springs are kept closed hid beneath, within. Our souls are moved by powers behind the wall. In the subterranean reaches of the spirit, a puissance acts and wrecks not what it means. Using unthinking monitors and scribes, it is the cause of what we think and feel. Yes.
So this is telling us a bit more about these powers behind the wall that are moving our souls. Subterranean means under the earth, under the ground. In the subterranean reaches, areas, parts of the spirit. There's a power, a puissance, a power is acting. But it doesn't care about the significance of what it is doing. It wrecks not, it doesn't care what it means. That puissance is using unthinking monitors and scribes. A monitor is somebody who's checking, you know, keeping track of what's happening. And a scribe notes things down. But this checking and this noting down, it's being done in an unconscious way, without thinking. But that power, which uses those unthinking monitors and scribes, that is the cause of what we think and feel. Alice. The troglodytes of the unconscious mind, ill-trained, slow, stammering interpreters, only of their small tasks, routine, aware, and busy with the record in their cells, the record in their cells, concealed in the subliminal secrecies, mid and obscure occult machinery, capture the mystic morse whose measure lilt transmits the messages of the cosmic force. Hmm. Troglodytes. Troglodytes are beings who live underground or in caves. So there are these beings and powers of the subconscious mind. They are interpreters, but they haven't been properly trained. And they are uh, slow at their work because they haven't been properly trained. And when they uh, interpret, they stammer. They don't speak clearly. And they are only concentrated on the routine of their own small task. They're not seeing any bigger picture. They are busy with what they're focused on is the record in our cells, in the cells of our body, of whatever happens. Hmm? They are concealed, they're hidden in these secrecies, these secret areas below the threshold of consciousness, subliminal, below the threshold of consciousness. And there they are at work in the midst of an obscure hidden machinery. They use that machinery to capture the mystic morse. Do, do you know this word? Morse code. It, that's why it has a capital M after Mr. Morse who invented it. And um, that code, I don't know whether it is still used these days. It used to be in use in um, sending messages over distances. And it's just a, a collection of um, short and long um, signals which make patterns which correspond to letters and which can be built up into words. So it's a kind of code. And when it, it used to be transmitted uh, by sound. So that's like a kind of music when you listen to it. Lilt, he says, it's like a song, a mystic song. So this is secret messages that are being sent. 
and these are transmitting this uh, d this code is transmitting the messages of the cosmic force of the universal force and all that's going on apparently within the body hmm? Kamala lilt it's like a song or a little music Tap, tap dancing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this poem falls into the life in a hell and echoes from the dumb subconscious gives. Speech leaves the quivers. The heart vibrates the world. The will. Hmm? Will. The. Answer and tissue and nerves bathe the car. Our lives translate this subtle intimacies. All of this is the converse of the secret power. Mm. So this is a kind of communication that's going on. Mm. The troglodytes are uh, transmitting these messages. Mm. And uh, other troglodytes are receiving them. And they are receiving the messages of the cosmic force. So when it gets received, it's like a whisper. Something whispering into the inner ear of our life force. Hmm? Not the surface ear, the inner ear. And that whisper echoes through the, the he says, done colorless, the dark, colorless caves of the subconscious. The subconscious is just full of dark caves. Hmm? So the, when these echoes sound there, then the being responds. Suddenly we say something, speech leaps, thought quivers, we get an idea, the heart vibrates. The will answers. There's a response from the will. And the body obeys the, uh, the orders. The tissue and the nerve obey the call. So our lives, the actions of our lives, the behavior of our bodies and our brains is just uh, translating these subtle intimacies, these communications that are going on between these troglodytes. All that exchange, that commerce, it's uh, being done by a secret power. Is this only uh, connected to the uh, trees in big forests? If they find some alarming thing, they send signals to the faraway plant trees. No? <laughs> yes, we, nowadays uh, they find that it's like that, that even the plants are communicating with each other. Yeah. Hmm. And all these are the, the communications, the movements, the powers of the little life. In the next canto we will read about the greater life. That's another whole level. But this little life influences us so much. We think that we are conscious, uh, reasonable, thoughtful beings. But we are so much influenced by all these little movements that are going on in the lower reaches of our consciousness without us being aware of them at all. So we can read a little bit further. Would you like to read? Thinking of that is the mind of life. Its choice is the world of elemental strength. That to know not their own birth and 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 thoughts and glimpse not the immense intent they serve. 
in this needle life of man, bread, food, and dirt, yet filled with poignant, small, ignoble things. The conscious world is pushed a hundred ways and feels the push but not the hand that drive. For none can see the masked irony drop. True. 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 To whom our figure selves are marionettes. Our deep unmeeting movement in their grasp. Our passionate strife and entertainment scene. Mm. We should learn this off by heart. A thinking puppet is the mind of life. It's not the higher mind of reason and insight. It's the mind of the life being. And it's like a puppet, like a marionette that's being worked by puppeteers. So what this puppet does its choice is the work of powers, of elemental strengths that don't know, that are themselves ignorant. They don't know where they've been born from and they don't know why they are there, what is the cause and purpose. These strengths do not know. They are manipulating us, but they don't know what they are doing and why they're doing it. In this nether life, this little lower life of man, this lower life which is colorless, drab, hued, dull, and even though it is filled with poignant, small, ignoble things, things that are touching, piteous, and yet often also ugly and shameful. The conscious dull, each of us, or the, our life mind part, gets pushed this way and that way. It feels the push, it responds to the push, it doesn't see the, the hands of those puppeteers that are driving it because nobody can see them. They are these, uh, these powers, these elemental strengths that are manipulating the puppets. They are masked. They wear masks. We can't see them, who they, what, who they are really. And uh, he says they are ironic. They are just playing about with us. <laughs> a troupe, a troupe is a, a word that's used for a group of entertainers. So, to that troupe, our figure selves, the little uh, representations of our little life, are marionettes. Marionettes are puppets that are controlled by strings. There are other kinds of puppies that we put on our hands and we make them do things like this. But the marionettes, they, they have a, um, they are, their limbs are controlled by strings and the, the puppeteers stand behind the curtain and they manipulate like this, making them move very, very cleverly. It's a particular kind of puppet. So that's how we are moved by those elemental strengths. So we do things without knowing what we are doing, unwitting, unconscious movements in the grasp of those puppeteers. And our passionate strife, all this stuff that we care about so much and get so disturbed about. <laughs> it is just an entertainment scene for them. 
maybe if we would remember that more often, then we wouldn't get into so much passionate strife. Dana Lakshmi. Ignorant themselves of their own fond of strength, they play their part in the enormous whole. Agents of darkness imitating light, spirits obscure and moving things obscure, unwillingly they serve a mightier power. Anantis engines organizing chants channels purpose of a stupendous way, tools of the unknown, who use us as their tools, invested with power in nature's nether state, into the actions mortals think they know, they bring the incoherences of fate, or make a doom of time's slipshod capitals, and toss the lives of men from hand to hand in an inconsequent and devious game. Hmm. Terrible. So these elemental strengths are themselves ignorant of where their strength comes from. The origin, the fount of their strength, they don't know where that is. They just play out their part in this enormous whole of the universe. They are really agents of darkness, but they're imitating light. They are spirits, but they're obscure spirits. And they move obscure things, the shadowy things, without meaning to, unwillingly, they are serving a greater power, a mightier power. Ananke is the Greek, ancient Greek goddess of necessity. And it is said that um, the other Greek gods, whenever she appeared in their halls, they would turn their faces away. They didn't want her to see them. <laughs> She's a dreadful goddess, a goddess of necessity, of what has to be. So they are tools, engines, machines belonging to Ananke. And she's necessity, but what she's doing is organizing chance so that it seems to be, or it turns into, necessity. He says that they are perverse channels. They're channels of a stupendous will, an extremely powerful will. But they are perverted, they're twisted and distorted. They've actually, they are actually tools of the unknown. And they are using us as their tools. They're just using us for their purposes. They have really been given power, invested with power. They've been given power in this lower state of nature, in the lower life. And one of the things that they do is into the actions which we human beings think are our own actions that we've decided on, thought about carefully, chosen to do, they bring the incoherences of fate, bringing in uh, unpredictable, irrational movements which determine destiny. Mm -hmm. Or they make a doom of time's slipshod caprice. Maybe in time, certain things just happen like that without anybody thinking about it very much. Something that's slipshod, it's done carelessly. 
and caprice. It's also just done like that without, because somebody feels like it, without any real justification. Into that slipshod caprice, they turn that into doom, into disaster, into catastrophe for perhaps large numbers of people. Hmm? They toss the lives of men from hand to hand, just juggling with them, playing with them in this inconsequent and devious game. For them it's a kind of a game and an in, um, entertainment. Hmm. Inconsequent. It, it's actually meaningless. Devious, tricky. So it's not a very nice place to stop, but I think we'll stop there for today. Impenetrable. A mystery recondite is the vast plan of which we are a part. Its harmonies are discords to our view because we know not the great theme they serve. Inscrutable work the cosmic agencies. Only the fringe of a wide surge we see. Our instruments have not that greater light. Our will tunes not with the eternal will. Our heart's sight is too blind and passionate. Impotent to share in nature's mystic tact. Inapt to feel the pulse and core of things. Our reason cannot sound life's mighty sea and only counts its waves and scans its form. It knows not whence these motions touch and pass. It sees not whither sweeps the hurrying flood. Only it strives to canalize its powers and hopes to turn its course to human ends. But all its means come from the inconscient's store. Unseen here act dim, huge world energy and only trickles and currents are our share. Our mind lives far off from the authentic light, catching at little fragments of the truth in a small corner of infinity. Our lives are inlets, of an ocean's force. Our conscious movements have sealed origins, but with those shadowy seats no converse hold, no understanding binds our comrade parts, our acts emerge from a crypt our minds ignore. Our deepest depths are ignorant of themselves. 
Even our body is a mystery shop. As our earth's roots lurk, screened below our earth, so lie unseen our roots of mind and life. Our springs are kept close hid beneath within. Our souls are moved by powers behind the wall. In the subterranean reaches of the spirit, a puissance acts and wrecks not what it means. Using unthinking monitors and scribes, it is the cause of what we think and feel. The troglodytes of the subconscious mind, ill-trained, slow, stammering interpreters, only of their small tasks routine aware and busy with the record in our cells, concealed in the subliminal secrecies mid an obscure occult machinery, capture the mystic morse whose measured lilt transmits the messages of the cosmic force. A whisper falls into life's inner ear and echoes from the dun subconscious caves. Speech leaps, thought quivers, the heart vibrates, the will answers, and tissue and nerve obey the call. Our lives translate these subtle intimacies. All is the commerce of a secret power. A thinking puppet is the mind of life. Its choice is the work of elemental strengths that know not their own birth and end and cause and glimpse not the immense intent they serve. In this nether life of man, drab-hued and dull, yet filled with poignant, small, ignoble things, the conscious doll is pushed a hundred ways and feels the push, but not the hands that dry. For none can see the masked, ironic troop to whom our figure selves are marionettes, our deeds unwitting movements in their grasp, our passionate strife an entertainment scene. Ignorant themselves of their own fount of strength, they play their part in the enormous whole. Agents of darkness imitating light, spirits obscure and moving things obscure, unwillingly they serve a mightier power. Ananke's engines organizing chants. 
channels perverse of a stupendous will, tools of the unknown who use us as their tools, invested with power in nature's nether state, into the actions mortals think their own, they bring the incoherences of fate or make a doom of time's slipshod caprice and toss the lives of men from hand to hand in an inconsequent and devious game.